Hey guys, just wanted to apologize if there's any background noise. It's my, my little girl, she's in the background playing right now, so um, I apologize. But I just wanted to go over Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 real fast. So I'm going to read verse 9, verse 10, and verse 11, but I wanted to highlight verse 10. So Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for, death for every man. And that's amazing. And that's the salvation, the free gift given by God uh, for all men who believe and call upon his name is that Christ came and died for the sins of the world, took on the sins of the world and died for us so that we wouldn't have to, that we can know, now know God everlasting life through Christ. He came and he died so that we don't have to. He tasted death, but... He is now alive, and through him we can now be alive and be with God and have a relationship with God. But verse 10 says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons into glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through the sufferings. And that's just amazing, too. It's another verse that highlights just how Jesus is God. He is God in the flesh, and how he is the God of the Old Testament, and by all things are him. Of him and all things came into existence of him and by him and then verse 11 says for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one so it's all one body of Christ all of us who get sanctified by the blood of Christ we're all one in one body together just like the Father or is with the Son and the Son and the Holy Spirit we're all together as one body through the Spirit of God through Christ <clears throat> For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. And that's amazing, you know. And we know Romans 1, 16. For we are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because of the salvation that we've had. is first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. But he says, if any man should be ashamed of me, I shall also be ashamed of him in front of the Father. But he's unashamed to call us brothers, to call us friends. And that's amazing. That's a loving God. It's all the characteristics of Jesus. That is a loving God. And it's perfect. Um, but verse 9, or verse 10, excuse me, it says, For whom all things and by whom are all things. And that's why I just wanted to go to John real quick. Because we know John chapter 10 verse 30, Jesus says, I am the Father one. And we know that Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, it says that he is the visible image of the invisible God. So he is God having come in the flesh. We can actually see God now by looking at Christ. And there's many other scriptures that we know. Luke, uh, where he says, where they ask, show us the Father. And Philip says, Philip says, show us the Father, and Jesus says, how long have I been with you, Philip? Have I, have I not shown you? How can you say, show me the Father? So there's, we can go all day and pick out scriptures of how Jesus is God. And I wanted to highlight here, too, one is John, from this verse, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 uh, and 10, how I wanted to go to John and, and compare it real quick, just for Jesus being the God of the Old Testament, and all things came into existence and came together by him because he is God. Um, so chap John chapter 1 verse 1 I'm going to go to John chapter 1 verse 14 because it's a little bit easier to understand for people John chapter 1 verse 14 it says and the word was made flesh so the word is Jesus and he was made flesh and he dwelt among us and beheld his glory and the glory is the one begotten father one of the begotten father full of grace and truth so we know that Jesus Christ is the word of God having been made flesh and he's the glory of, of the only begotten of the Father. And he's full of grace and truth. So John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we know that Jesus being the Word, he was with God, and he was also God. And that's the, the Trinity. Uh, and a lot of people have a hard time understanding it. Uh, Jesus, The Father, the Son, and then the Holy Ghost. One being, all one God, and then three persons. So the Father, the Word and the Spirit, all one being, all the same God, and it connects us, the Spirit of God that lives in us, the Holy Spirit, is what connects us together with, with Christ. But in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus was God. 
Verse 2 says, And the same was in the beginning with God. 3. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. So it's just another scripture in Hebrews, the chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, that just proves that Christ is God, and that all things came into existence um, by Him and for Him. And, and it's just amazing because... Verse 9 says that he tasted death so that we don't have to. And that's just the, how loving our God is. We know that we're wicked, vile. We, we, there's nothing that we could ever do to repay God. But yet he's so full of love. He, he loves us so much that he gave us another chance. Coming down into the system, put himself in flesh and having tasted death, taking all sins of the world so that we could know him and we could have life and have salvation and, and know our value and have peace in times of hardships, to know what true life is, to have everlasting life, to be with him forever. And it's just amazing. 10, it just proves that the salvation's perfect through the sufferings, through his sufferings, and our salvation will be made perfect through him and his sufferings because he tasted death for us. But all things were made of him and by him and it's just amazing because he is God in the flesh and he's with us we know that he is literally dwelling in us and it's just amazing because we know that we have a loving God and he conquered death for us and that we can just give in to him and uh, know that our life has meaning and it has purpose and value and we're going to be forever with him because he's he came and he showed us what life is and what love is and, and just everything good he is he is so amazing. Hallelujah to our Father. We find we have a, a meaning to life. We have a purpose to life. Life has value. We get to know the living God and He lives inside of us. And we get to know Him through Christ. And it's just so amazing. So just wanted to bring this scripture to you guys' uh, attention. I'm sure you already know about it. It's just amazing. It's another scripture that just proves how wonderful our God is. So God bless you guys.